Jordan. You live a life of brutality and grittiness. You reside, currently, in the Silver Watch base camp, some days west of Baron Sands. Spirits have been high lately since uh, the taking of Baron Sands for their own. Victory, the leader, has given her lieutenants most of the reign at the moment while she resides in the base camp with her second, Asher Rintari, a man you know all too well. Earlier that day, he had told you that you were going to be performing again, that another beast had been caught, and while it wasn't enough sport for the prize fighters, it would provide enough sport for you to warm up the crowd. Um, and that is where you are currently, with Oss perched on your shoulder, flapping his wings a few times, uh, but his, uh, he remains perched and ready as you stand before the gates. Joran's waiting there, arms folded. She's, for the most part, ignoring Oss's fidgeting as she's, uh, she's waiting. She's got her hammer propped up next to her and is just focused on the gates. Yeah, you. so you stand before the gates. You can hear just beyond the roar of the crowd waiting for you. You aren't sure which beast they've caught for you to play with this time, but before you can really linger on it too long, the gates are opening. The powerful heat of the afternoon sun beckoning you forward. Takes a deep breath, pulls the maul up to her shoulder, and she walks out. All right. And you walk into the Silver Watch Coliseum, a massive, uh, a massive desert arena where the sands below you are splattered with blood. Uh, the crowd roars as you enter, a common enough entertainment of sport to entertain, for lack of really anything else in the immediate area, um, you know that the Gladiator matches are where Victory scouts for some of her lieutenants, her prize fighters. Um, it's an easy way to earn your way up the ranks or meet your end in a very bloody, gruesome way. Trial by fire, as it were. And uh, as you walk out into the arena, you see a uh, mountain lion get released from a cage and start running at you. Um, and rather than do initiative, since it's just the two of them, we'll go, uh, go back and forth. Um, and as it runs up to you, I will go and let you act first. Gotcha. As it runs up to Joran, she lifts that ball up so that it kind of blocks, um, the leap. And then she'll take a swing with that nice, big, heavy end. All right. And that is a 23 to hit. Yeah. For seven damage. Nice. Yeah, you feel a nice uh, crack as it connects with the beast. Um, the, cat, the cougar gives a guttural yowl as it uh, kind of lands on its feet and moves to pounce. Um... And it is going to do, um, that is a 20 to hit you? 20 hits. Alright. For 9 damage. Oof. Rolled max. <laughs> oh boy. Um, and go ahead and make a DC 13 strength saving throw. Yeah, so you, you aren't knocked prone as the mountain lion just jumps on you, uh, kind of trying to tear through your splint armor, and you can go ahead and make uh, make your attacks. Or, does Oss have a separate turn from yours, or does he... Uh, yes, he does get um, a separate turn. Um, I dictate what he does, but he does roll for initiative on his own, technically. Okay, I'll say that um, at this point you can go ahead and roll for him. Gotcha. Um, Oss will leave, kind of dive off Joran's shoulder and come around to the back of the lion here, and we'll take a beak attack. Ten, unfortunately, yeah. As he uh, kind of dives in with his beak, the cougar is just quick enough to kind of uh, duck out of the way. 
Um, but it leaves you an opening to go ahead and attack then as well. Gotcha. She will go ahead and swing around with that maul again, try to knock it away from her. Unfortunately, yeah, this is yeah, this is a pretty nimble beast as it uh, kind of jumps over your heavy swing, kind of see- seeing it coming a little bit, and is uh, going to this time uh, kind of go in and try to bite you for twenty-two. Oh god, twenty-two hits for eleven damage. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, she is already quite bloodied. All right, uh, go ahead and make your and Oss's attacks. Gotcha. She will go first. She's trying to answer again with that maul, just swinging around, trying to hit that thing as best she can as it's moving around her. It's a 19 to hit. That'll hit. Gotcha. Hit, hit 12 Ooh, damage. Ooh, real good damage. Yeah, the cougar likewise is also looking pretty rough at this point as you get another solid crack in with your maul. Imagine she kind of slams it in, and Oss will kind of swoop in from the other side to try to take another beak attack. That is a 20 to hit. Yeah, that is a hit. Right, let me see. Damage is 1d4 piercing. Let's see. Just for two damage. Whew. Yeah, this uh, cougar's looking pretty rough as... uh, Oss goes in, and you can see the beak actually tears into parts of its back. It's starting to be bleeding pretty heavily, its blood mixing with the sand uh, that already is speckled with blood of previous fights. So it is going to kind of give a last attempt, um, I guess, uh, with its claw for 23. Uh, that definitely hits. For, uh, it's, uh, four. <laughs> Four slash damage. damage. Yeah, as it just okay. kind of definitely doesn't. It's starting to lose some of that uh, ability to really make a dent. It's starting to get pretty weak uh, as you and Oss can make another attack. Gotcha. Uh, let's see. So since it's it's um, on her now, right? Trying to attack her. Mm-hmm. She'll pull out a dagger from her belt and try to stab it while she's got it there. Yeah, that hits. 22 for 7. Yeah, how do you want to do this? So I imagine it's probably got claws up in her shoulders as it's trying to bite her, so she'll just pull that dagger out, reverse grip, slam it into the lion's ribs, make sure it stops moving, and once it does, she'll just hoist it up for the crab. Oh yeah, the crowd is going wild as you, uh, hold up the kind of dead, uh, limp body of this mountain lion. Uh, they're absolutely enthralled. You know, this is- you were here to make the crowd get kind of excited, pumped up, and you've succeeded, uh, in a pretty close battle. Um, because how is, uh, Joran looking after taking a few of those swipes Uh. from that cat? pretty pretty rough she is definitely bloody i think she's probably a little more practiced at not looking like she's about to fall over but she's she's pretty close to it yeah you um you hear some uh not the entire crowd but some parts of the crowd cheering uh bone breaker bone breaker and um your your match has ended uh you're free to go back to kind of the back area where they have um, some medics available to the winners, specifically, um, after the match. And I'll just go over here. Um, and you can make your way back there. Um, and they, they start kind of patching up and stopping most of the bleeding from the scratching and bite marks from you. Um, and Oss doesn't leave your side, really. He just kind of remains perched. Um, he might flap up a little ways. It's like a side tent off of the main coliseum where you are right now. Yeah, I imagine it probably makes it a little hard for her to sit somewhere and have them work since he is a pretty large bird. Um, and he's pretty protective, she, too. Yeah. 
she'll kind of every once in a while if he tries to like snap at anybody she'll just reach up and kind of flick him a little bit uh, but otherwise lets him lets him hang out there and she'll just sit and let the medics do their thing yeah the medic that comes over to you um looks definitely unnerved like they're the equivalent of like a nursing student who's not really gotten enough sleep lately um but is here and present and um she's kind of going to uh tie up some of the the wounds to stop them from bleeding and Jorn gives a like kind of warning like few few noises i don't i don't know how to replicate a vulture noise i'm not gonna embarrass myself by trying um but he gives a few imagination imagination, (laughs) warning vulture noises and the the medic kind of like backs up a little bit like oh shit jordan will reach up again and just kind of flick him a little bit on the leg and just hey right and he'll he'll settle down at your at your command um, he kind of does, like, nudge a little bit against you. There's still, like, blood on his face from where he had uh, he had assisted in the fight. Um, but he'll just kind of fondly, like, butt your head. Give him a little butt back with a, with a horn. Just settles into the seat so that the nervous-looking medic can just do their thing. She's... This is you know, every day to her so she's just gonna sit and let them do what they need to do. Yep. I just got it over with. Easy enough. Um, once they've got you all patched up, uh, you have kind of free reign. The afternoon has kind of started turning to early evening. Um, and you are free to roam around as you wish. You have your own quarters um, as well. Um, you know that there's like a there's food provided in one of the tents. Um, it's kind of, it's not a full village per se, or a city like Baron Sands. It's a base camp. Um, the Colosseum itself, you know, is kind of built into um, a kind of a gorge that already existed. The, the surrounding camp was just kind of built around it to suit their needs. Gotcha. And was she given any kind of instructions as far as what to do after the fight, or was she just mostly left to her own devices once she was done? Um, you know, usually after the fights, um, Asher will come and address you, any of the other fighters. He's sort of the one who organizes these, um, these events. And you see, um, he does come eventually. He's, um, uh, kind of broad-shouldered, rather muscled individual. You can see he's got a a sword sheathed on his back, um, dark brown skin, kind of uh, long dreadlocks, kind of pulled back partially, um, and dressed in nice, kind of thick uh, leather armors. Uh, Very protective, you know, he's pretty high up. Um, To some, he's Victory's second hand, or right hand. And uh, he comes over, kind of gives you an approving nod. Not bad. What you pay me for, isn't it? That it is. And he tosses you um, your payment for the fight, um, which you count out to be um, three gold. Yep, she will take that very short amount of time that it would take to count through three gold and add it to her point curse Uh, and by this point you can kind of hear the distant sounds of uh, whatever fight uh, is going on after you is currently taking place Um, you can hear several kind of deeper growls and howls um, and the uh, clanging of steel you're not quite sure you know what fights going on but it's almost daily occurrence it's pretty usual uh pretty normal for around here but um says good work keep this up and we'll see about getting you some more sporting things to fight 
heard. Uh, and the, so we can hear the, the fighting from um, the rest of the pit. Mm -hmm. Just kind of look back over that way and then back to Rentari. And anything else you need me to do? Not really. Got our next fighters going up against a few packs of, or a few knolls we caught from the pack that was traveling through. Uh, you're dismissed for the evening. Do as you will. And he kind of moves to go back to watch and oversee the rest of the fights. She'll give him a nod as he leaves and kind of wait two, three minutes just kind of ambling around in that area so that he clears out first and then she'll make her way back over to the Coliseum so that she can watch some of the other fights going on. Yeah, um, you make your way over towards the seating area and you do see, um, that looks like more of a group has formed. Um, you can see several kind of brawny looking, uh, fighters. One's got an axe, another's got a sword and shield. Um, one's kind of skirting around the battlefield with a bow and arrow and they're all, um, they're a bit into the fight. You can see now that, uh, Two of the gnolls have been felled, uh, two still remain, um, and they're cleaving pretty pretty soundly into the uh, warrior with the axe. Um, it's a pretty close back and forth, you gather, um, but eventually both of the gnolls are felled and the crowd once again goes wild um, as the warrior brings the axe around and just beheads one of them. Um, the head kind of hitting the dirt and rolling a little bit. Yeah, she, well, she doesn't cheer. She doesn't cheer with the crowd. She's not, uh, doesn't want that much attention drawn to herself. Uh, but she does kind of watch with her head kind of bobbing in approval as she's taking in that just end of the fight, that that whole energy around it. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't know the fighters personally, but you do know that they are a little bit more seasoned. They've been here a little longer than you have. Um and they've gotten to the point where they start um, fighting in groups. That's kind of the next step of where you are um, in your solo fights. They want to make sure that people are able to fight on their own and then fight, be able to fight in a group and um, just kind of assess their abilities. It's, um, not everybody in the Silver Watch takes part in the festivities, but those that do are either rewarded handsomely and a, like given a pretty significant position, um, such as Asher Rintari. You knew that he was once uh, in the position where you are currently and uh, had, had worked his own way up. But um, as you're sitting there watching the fight, you um, kind of sense... And, well, you really probably hear them before uh, anything as they, uh, a, a human comes up and sits down next to you. And it's a, um, she's a familiar face. You kind of have gotten to know each other just a little bit through, um, through being around the camp together. Uh, you see Asher's daughter, a teenage woman with kind of lighter brown skin, um, kind of thick, uh, curly hair kind of pulled back into a bun uh, and she's got goggles and a scarf um, not quite geared out like some of the fighters um, but she's got something just a little bit of armor for protection just in case um, and she sits down next to you and is just kind of like excitedly watching How, did I miss much? A couple gnolls hit the dirt Ah, oh, yeah. I remember when uh, my dad went out with the party that found him. Got quite the surprise. But figured they'd probably make for some sport at least. Something like that. I don't think it really gave him too much trouble. Nah. Anyway, I saw your fight. That was pretty fancy. I wasn't sure they put you up against a mountain lion that was... That's, oof. I wouldn't 
exactly call that fancy. I think they were waiting for me to get mauled. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but I mean, you didn't. That's pretty good. Oh, he tried. Yeah, he, I mean, that's my dad. He tries his best to, you know, get people killed. And it's probably, you know, he's he doesn't personally have it out for Dragonborn, but like... Uh, there are some people there who are really... Quite a few who'd line his pockets better if he got it done. Probably. But hey, I mean, all the better that you're kind of kicking ass out there. Speaking of your father, does he know you're over here? Yeah, no, yeah, not, maybe not. Um, no. So... Uh, and she kind of like leans in like conspiratorially, conspiratorially. Um, so I have a plan, an idea even, and I need your help. What exactly do you want me to do? And she kind of like looks around. Um, most of the like people like nearest to you are too invested in the fight. For all intents and purposes, she picked a pretty good place to kind of have a discreet conversation. Um, but uh, she continues, Well, I, I heard some rumors about uh, a caravan. Well, not a caravan. A caravan that came through that had talked with some miners in the area, and they, they found something. I've been studying for quite some time now, and I think... They, they found uh, parts of a ley line in one of the mines nearby. And you just heard something like that, like, off the street? Okay, well, it's not really important how I got the information, because um, I definitely wasn't supposed to hear it, but I heard it anyway. And anyway, I want to go, I gotta go check it out. I gotta. And I need your help. Yeah, and what does your father think about that idea? Oh, he doesn't know. I don't plan on telling him. So, let me get that straight. You want me, the one he pays, and tries to get killed half the time, to walk you out of the camp into the desert to some mine? Somewhere? Yes, it's not that far. Honestly, we could probably, like, because I haven't, like, scouted it out, but I know that it's, we can do it in, like, a night. We can go, you can, I can get some notes, and take, like, get, just get information. Come on, I've, I've wanted to know more about magic for so long. Everybody has always talked about how great it was. Like, some of the dwarves in camp... They, they were old enough that they even remember it. But I... I gotta go check it out. And we can be back before morning. They'll never even know. Have you ever been into the desert before? I mean, yeah, but I... That's that's why I want you to have... I, I, I don't want to go alone, because I know there are, like, the dire coyotes, the scorpions, the, the mountain lions. There's a lot. Jordan kind of sits there for a moment with just a long suffering look because this is probably the worst idea that she's heard in a while. Mm -hmm. um, but she also might have just that little spark of rebellion and I think she might trust Sabine enough that if it's something that she thinks is worth looking into she could probably be persuaded so she kind of sits there for a minute just kind of staring out over the coliseum then back to sabine and not doing it for free no 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 i can i can i can cover it don't worry i can give you double what my father would for a fight and is it coming out of your father's pockets I get an allowance. Fine. Yes! 
fine. Yes, 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 yes. Fine. And she like starts bouncing he, up in her seat. He doesn't. He does not find out. No, no, he won't find out. As you realize what he will have done to me, if you get caught for this, you will not take the fall for it. I know. And um, she she does kind of like hesitate as you say that. Um, she looks a little apprehensive. Yeah, I know, and it's it's a lot to ask. But like any anything I find, any kind of magic and stuff, I I mean I'd share it with you too, cause I mean that's just it's 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 too big to ignore, you know. For someone like you, maybe I don't I don't have a need for magic, but let's just oh, let's just get this over with. Um, why don't we wait until night? Um, I think it'll be a little easier for us to slip out without being seen. Um, because my father's still expecting me back here in a, a little while, um, for, for dinner. So, uh, once I can get clear of that, then I will come find you and we'll sneak out and then sneak back in and no one will be the wiser. Alright, I'll get some things together. Hey, thank you. And um, she kind of like gives you like a half hug um, and will scamper off. Torin continues to sit there for several minutes because she's got the feeling that she probably should not have gotten swayed into that. But she did. Um, she'll kind of just sit back for a few minutes, watch whatever is still going on in the pit, kind of scratch at Oss's feathers a little bit, and then she'll eventually get up, head back to her quarters so that she can start gathering some supplies just in case, and, uh, wait for Sabine to come get her. Yeah, um, by the time you get back to your tent and start gathering things together, um... It's starting to get pretty dark. Um, the sun is starting to set. Uh, and sure enough, as the set sun kind of falls be below the horizon, uh, Sabine ducks into your tent. Okay. I think I've given us, us enough of a cover. We can just slip out. And um, at this point, she's got like a hood um, and like a kind of a cloak over her to kind of help conceal, be a little more stealthy. Um, I think we can do this. And I might have, up, I, I might have, like, put aside more gold for you than I said earlier. Uh, here. And she just, like, hands over a sack full of ten gold. Okay, sure, and we'll take a moment to just kind of flick through the stack with her thumb so she can kind of get a sense of how much it is and she pockets it because she's that makes her feel a little bit better about doing it she still thinks that it's probably going to blow up fantastically in her face but that's at least money she might be able to bribe someone with to look the other way on the way back um, and quick side note when she was getting um, tended to by the medics was that any HP back, or should I roll some hit dice um, real quick? Yeah, so I think between the medics and you definitely had enough time for a short rest, you can go ahead and put your HP back up at full. Gotcha. Alright, well she will... she'll grab the supplies that she put aside while she was waiting and gestures for Sabine. Let me... what's... you said you have a cover? Or are we just walking out? Or... Should you be telling me something right now in case someone stops us? Um, that's a great question. If anybody stops us, I just say that I wanted to go get some rock samples. My, dad's, my dad knows that I've been doing a little bit of research and trying to figure things out. So, uh, he probably wouldn't question me going out to try and get something for research or find some weird lizard for study. Um... 
they just don't know how how far they just don't have to know how far out of camp we're going you know and the other question is is why you took me and not one of his more trusted uh, enforcers or because, people anything well a because one of his other enforcers would have probably just rat or sold me out and ratted me out to my father immediately uh b um you're like nice and i and a good fighter and i it would have been like really kind of suspicious i think if i took you know like one of the prize fighters not not that you're not good it just uh, sabine i know why you asked me i'm asking what you're asking you'll tell someone else um, probably actually just that, like, I didn't want to take one of the prize fighters because Dad tends to be pretty protective over them, and, uh, I wanted somebody to watch my back because there have been sightings of dire co coyotes in the area, and it'd be really kind of stupid for me to just go out alone because that'd be bad. Yeah. Oh, all right, that's... That's something. Let's... Let's go over with. Alright, alright. And she kind of steals herself in. The two of you uh, walk out of camp. Um, it actually isn't, um, with the hood up, she doesn't seem to draw too much attention. Um, despite being kind of high up, just based on who her father is. Um, and she, the two of you are able to make your way kind of out of camp. Um, which the camp, by the way, is kind of settled in between two kind of rocky ledges. Um, in the middle of those ledges is where the fighting pit is. Um, and uh, there are, like, I guess ladders and um, some, like, lowering, like, devices. Not, like, strictly elevators, but, like something similar without all the technolo uh, technology and electrical bits. Um, and you guys are able to go up to one side, um, the kind of more, let me see, it's the eastern side, and you guys are able to kind of get make it to the edge of camp where the some of the guards are. And it's, unsurprisingly, as you guys approach the guards, uh, you are stopped, um, hey, um, what's your business? And, um, Sabine, at this point, will kind of lower the hood a little bit and, uh, give a wave. Hi, um, I'm just going out for some samples for my research. Uh, my dad approved it already, so. And the guard is already looking kind of suspicious and looks over to Joran. Joran probably stopped uh, about a step or so behind Sabine, and she's got her arms folded and um uh, is probably back on her shoulder so she's just looming and kind of staring down the guard she's not going to say anything she's gonna let sabine do that talking but she's kind of looming like a you know In intimidating intimidating presence behind oh her. yes <laughs> sabine this like a ray of sunshine and then joran just like looming over like if you touch her <laughs> exactly um which Sabine is just kind of has a warm smile towards the guard. Um, and I mean, I'm taking, uh, taking a bodyguard with me just so, you know, in case there's any dire coyotes, I heard them out the other night, uh, any mountain lions, anything like that. My dad would want me to be safe, you know? And the guard at that just kind of like nods a little bit, makes enough sense for him. And, um, be back soon and try not to linger. And we'll let the two of you pass. Toronto kind of usher Sabine forward so they can get clear of that gate before he either changes his mind, someone else walks by, um, anyone has time to really stop and think about that. <laughs> yeah, you guys definitely are able to uh, make a quick escape into the sands. Uh -oh which stretch out before you endlessly. There's oh, kind of a clear path where a lot of trading comes through, some caravans, um, 
groups of are members of the Silver Watch, where they um, you can see there's a defined path down to Barren Sands, kind of trailing off towards the south. Um, and then there's a path that continues east. And you guys are taking the um, east path for the moment. Uh, Joran will kind of shake Oss off her shoulder and direct him to kind of fly up and kind of in a wide circle around where they plan to walk. Um, before he takes off, just you, you tell me if you see anyone on that road. And, um... With surprising like intelligence, Oz kind of gives just like a slight nod of his head and takes off into the sky. All right, so we're following the road, and then what? Uh, so we'll be following the road for a little while. It should take you know maybe a couple hours, and then we veer off north where the mines are, and we go in the mines. And I no specifically i might have like stolen some maps of the mines don't worry about how i got it but i have them and so i know where the ley line is it's down pretty far um they really only i think dug it up recently but it, there was a whole cavern apparently and they they found it and they've been really trying to keep it under wraps but it's really only a matter of time you know i know my father, once he hears about it, he's gonna tell Victory, and Victory's the one gonna, gonna send an expedition in to try and get some for herself, and then she'll, I don't know, try and find a way to use it, but I don't think she even knows how to use it or what it might mean. Yeah, that's, that's all above my pay grade, but you're sure we can do this in a night? Help. Hours of walking to the bottom of a cavern. Hours of walking back. We'll just uh, have to be quick. It'll be cutting it close, but I think we can do it. Jordan takes a moment to look at this short human. <laughs> and her the thought crosses her mind of how fast can you really walk? <laughs> um... And, I mean, you look down at Sabine, and she is youthful. She is just- she is not even really into full, like, mature adulthood. She's probably somewhere in the vein of, like, 17, 18 years old. Um, very kind of youthful innocence still in her eyes. Very- you can tell just a very hopeful expression of innocent- exci innocent excitedness over the possibility of- something thought long lost. Alright, well, let's just... Let's just get going. Yes, Hopefully yes, yes. we can make good time and we don't run into anything on the road. I mean, the roads are, I think, less of the risk. It's more the, uh, the mines themselves, which it's probably gonna be fine. There are people that have been in and out recently, so I don't think it'll be a huge issue. But um, she's kind of walking at a, a brisk pace forward. Joran will match it pretty easily. She's she's rather tall, so she probably doesn't have too much of an issue keeping up, and she's gonna... It's the, like, uh. big uh, Doberman walking next to yeah. her, like, a little um, Pomeranian where the legs are just... Yeah. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> yep, yep, basically. <laughs> Basically, um, yeah, she did. She would have, um, as part of that preparation, grabbed her her modified boots, so her kind of you know more draconic feet don't exactly look um, like those kind of tracks. Just as that extra precaution, um, mm -hmm. so it'll look more like just a large humanoid following with her. Uh, but she will just hope and pray to everything she doesn't really believe in that uh sabine knows where she's going yeah um you guys travel for a couple of a couple of hours on the road um and the kind of in the last hour you veer off of the road um towards uh north which at uh as you guys leave the road sabine pulls out 
a uh, kind of some papers that you see are maps that she probably shouldn't have, but she has anyway. And she's kind of looking over um, the like layout of the tunnels um, and some of the different um, like paths. Um, and it's not marked on the map where the ley line is, but it seems like she's kind of gleaned where it is. Um, all right, all right, I think should be coming up on it soon. And it looks like it's not super deep. It's in a, one of the newer caverns that they just started working in. So we should be able to get into it okay, I think. And it's late enough that I don't think anybody's going to be at the mine, because... I mean, they usually work during the day. Um, some of them work at night, but we should be going in late enough that I don't think we'll be running into them. You should have mentioned that there are people in here at night before we came. Only in the early night. I figured by the time that we got there, it would be more middle of the night, you know? And they don't have any watchmen to keep an eye on their profitable mine? Oh, I mean, they probably have a few. But I think, I think, if we can catch them in the middle of their rotation, we can sneak by. Alright. Alright. Did I mention that you're, like, the coolest? And the best. Because you are. You can lay off the flattery because you've already got me all the way out here. She she seems like a little sad that she was like trying to be like like a teenager that's like, oh man, she's so cool. Like a little bit not complete like hero worship, but like definitely looking up to Jord and she just kind of like nods, focuses, and will um you guys can kind of see the minds from this point. Uh some of the kind of rocky sands give way to um, a bit of a hill um, and you can see at the kind of foot I guess foothill um, is a smaller kind of entrance um, you can see a couple tents um, probably where they keep their supplies um, you can see um, some torches and stuff that have been set up and a couple guards at the entrance um, one of them looks like they're falling asleep, and the other is awake, but just kind of, like, leaned back against the, the kind of sharp hill, um, going upward. Um, and you do kind of off in the distance hear coyote howls, but it doesn't sound like it's anything close to where you guys are. Okay, can... Joran, take a look around and see if she can spot anyone that looks like they are keeping watch. Yeah, go ahead and make a perception check. It is a solid eight. <laughs> I'm gonna have, go ahead and have uh, Sabine make one as well. It is, oh, she rolled pretty good. Um, good. <laughs> one of us had to. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she kind of, whereas you were kind of alerted briefly by the howling of the coyotes, you kind of, like, look off a little ways. Um, she kind of taps her shoulder, look, look, look. Um, and uh, it looks like um, they're, the two guards go to talk to each other. The other one kind of wakes the other up. Um, and it looks like they're about to switch their guard rotation. We should, go, we should try and go now. Yeah, she'll, um, since they're going to be going into the mine underground, she's actually going to have Oss wait outside. Um, she'll have him perched somewhere, kind of not immediately in the guard's line of sight to kind of keep watch out here. Um, and then she will um, run with Sabine so they can get into the mine. Alrighty, and I'm going to have both Sabine and Jorn make some stealth checks as you guys uh, attempt to kind of move past the guards. That is a seven. A seven, uh, but uh, Sabine's 19. 
quite a, <laughs> uh, kind of makes up for it a little bit. Um, uh, she's very light on her feet. She is used to sneaking around her father and doing things that he might not entirely approve of. Um, as she kind of leads you forward, the two of you kind of linger just out of view of some of the firelight. Um, and as the two guards go into one of the tents, you guys quickly kind of make a jet for the entrance and you head in and you are, you are in between the average of both of your roles, uh, you, you are able to sneak past. Gotcha. Well, well, now that we're inside, Joran has even less of an idea of what they're doing there. Um, so she'll just gesture for Sabine to start leading the way. Um, she'll stay close enough that if anything does jump at them, she can kind of get up in between them. Um, but she's going to mostly let her take the lead here. Mm -hmm. And you see um, from her pack, she takes out um, a kind of small lantern and will briefly light it and use it. Um, she's got the maps in her hands. Uh, she kind of leads the way down. Um, and it's it's quiet. The In the desert, you're usually, you know, accompanied by various animal noises, uh, the sounds of the sands blowing and kind of hitting whatever tent you happen to be sleeping in that evening. There's no such noise here. It's eerie and unsettling, even for you. Um, Sabine, however, does not seem really deterred at all as she leads the two of you down. Um, with the lantern light, you can see. Um, looks like what they must be mining out of here, at least recently. Um, the walls have kind of been pockmarked. There's no real sign of anything that's been left. You are still in the old tunnels. Um, she leads her further down, further down, and you start to get into the newer, um, newer tunnels in the mines. You can see there's um, several minerals. There's some iron, um, kind of deeper within the rock. Down this far, you guys, it is more of a rock. It is less of a sand. Um, and you go further and further and at this point you've probably been traveling down for about an hour before um you come across a part of the mine that's been closed off and she seems confused by this as she looks down at the map and looks up at where it's been closed off that's not quite right i think it's supposed to be here Down this way? Yeah. I don't think uh, they've wanted people down here. And how has the how has the tunnel been closed off? Has it been collapsed? Is there like a blockade? Um, it looks like there's like a blockade. Like there's some wooden slats that have been kind of erected in the immediate area and then a um some fortifications just keeping it steady but keeping people from going in. Does it look like that's something that she can kind of just start pulling apart with some effort? Yeah, with Jorn's size and strength, it wouldn't be too much of an effort for her. It might take a little bit of time, but she could definitely do it. She'll just turn back to Sabine and... You're sure that it's down this way? I'm, I'm sure. Alright, keep an eye out behind us, and she'll start taking down the barricade. Yep, and Sabine will take up looking behind. Um, um, after about ten minutes, you're able to kind of make... You don't take the entire thing down, but you are able to kind of make an opening where the two of you can uh, fit through. Gotcha, she'll kind of gesture for Sabine's attention and wave her towards the, the opening to get her through. Yeah, and Sabine slips through with her lantern. Jorn will kind of duck and wedge through afterwards. And, um, you don't have to go very far before you start to see a strange glow 
it's not quite firelight. It's almost, it's got a kind of green tint to it. Looks like the very walls themselves, just veins here and there start to appear. Very thin, very weak, but they're there. Um, and Sabine's eyes kind of go wide and she actually turns down the flame in the lantern, almost turning it off entirely. And as she does, you can see farther down the, um, farther down the way, it starts to go, glow a little stronger. And we're hiding it back here. Yeah, I can see why their miners would ask quite a few questions. Um, and she's kind of hurrying uh, further down the mine. It's Joran kind of gives the glowing veins on the wall just one kind of almost suspicious look and then she'll follow after Sabine. As you head further in, you almost start to hear a kind of hum. Like a low droning noise that doesn't quite leave as uh, you go further down. And the, the veins get just a little thicker. Um, when you had first seen them, they were probably about as thin as some strands of hair. They were very sparse, but here they sort of start to coalesce into a web of veins that kind of pulse. And Sabine has taken out her journal at this point and is writing down furiously. She is, um, she will hold up one of the papers and kind of sketch over where the, uh, the glowing is coming from. She will, she's just going nuts as any scholar would in this situation. Yeah, Joran doesn't really know what to do with anything in this tunnel. Um, so she's gonna just kind of stand behind Sabine so she's watching the rest of the tunnel. Um, I think at this point, since they're, she's assuming that they're gonna stay stationary for a while, she's actually gonna sling them all around and just kind of rest it on the ground next to her and just kind of stand watch there with the lantern. Uh, and you uh, dutifully stand watch and... As you kind of have your back turned, focusing on where you- the uh, tunnel where you guys came from, from behind you, you see another light. And another. Little tiny motes appear, just floating in the air. And as you turn, you see Sabine is looking in absolute wonder um, as tiny little balls of light form in her hand. And it seems like she's focusing on them, and she kind of moves her hand, and is able to move them, and move them back. What the hell are you doing? It... You can focus on it. It's... You got... you. If you connect with the, the ley line, and you focus on it really, really hard, you... I think... And it... And almost immediately kind of sputters out just as soon as uh, she's able to summon them. Oh, you... oh, I think if I, I think if you can, we can go deeper. We, you would know Joran at this point. You guys have been down there long enough. It, by the, you would make it back by sunrise. You've been gone quite a while at this point and to linger any longer would be a very dangerous gamble. Sabine, it took us at least an hour to get this far, and we have several hours to get back. If we go any further, we are not going to make it back before that stone comes up. And you see the reality kind of sink into her at that point. Um, and she shuts the journal, kind of packs it away in her bag, and takes the lantern out and turns it back on. Right, right. Um, yeah, we should probably head back now. Um, that I have a lot to think about and more notes to take. Um, let's, let's hurry back then. I think I've seen enough. <laughs> that and, she will kind of usher them back towards the barricade. Yeah, you, um, you guys are able to head back towards the barricade. Um, and you know how you disassembled parts of it and you're able to kind of reassemble it 
just to try and hide uh, mm -hmm. where you guys were. And um, you, with Sabine kind of pulling out the maps and ma just checking a few tunnels, um, she's able to kind of lead the two of you back out of the tunnels. And as you come to the entrance, you can see there are a couple guards. Um, you can see Joran just kind of, or sorry, not Joran, Oss perched on one of the tents, kind of looking in where you guys are, kind of waiting for you. The guards haven't really taken too much notice to a stray vulture just perched on a tent. It happens. <laughs> um, they just think that maybe they ate a little too much or got some, like, food on their shirt, and Oss is there, like, waiting for more. <laughs> yeah, that giant creepy-ass vulture just staring at them is an everyday occurrence. Yeah, you know, um, not a bad omen or anything. Yeah, once they start getting closer to the mouth of the tunnel, um, Joran will kind of gesture for Sabine to kill the lantern so that they're not alerting the guards as they kind of get closer since I imagine that light will carry a little distance ahead of them. It will, yeah. And she's, yeah. uh, she kind of kills the flame and just attaches it back to her things. Gotcha. So I would imagine this, since she can't really see very well in the dark, it'll take her a little bit until she's close enough to see Oz, but as soon as she does, she'll kind of give the bird a little nod, like, to indicate that they're there. Uh, is there anyone, are the guards watching the entrance of the tunnel again? It doesn't look um, like maybe they've moved on. They're, it looks like they're currently looking out of the cave. They're not, lo they're not watching from anybody coming in the cave. Um, and there's, there's only one, one appears. You can see just very briefly kind of appears to be like patrolling camp. Gotcha. And the way that he's moving, is that going to put him like closer to the tunnel or is he moving away uh he's kind of moving away from the tunnel no way all right so she'll she'll wait to make sure that one starts heading far enough away and we'll kind of poke her head out are they able to kind of skirt around this side of the tunnel entrance so they can maybe try to make a break for some like rocks or anything to kind of keep them hidden from the one watchman that's stationary. Yeah, you can go ahead and uh, try and kind of skirt around from the edge of the cave where he's not watching. Um, go ahead and make uh, a couple stealth checks. I'll have, have Sabine make one too. That is a solid four. <laughs> um, stealth is not my strong suit. <laughs> it's okay. She did not roll too great herself. No. Um, and yeah, so like a heavily armed dragonborn and not a sneaky <laughs> sneaky rogue. <so. laughs> she she wanted the protection over sneaky. Yeah. Um so the two of you um it's not the quietest escape. And as you guys um you're able to kind of skirt around but as soon as you make a break for some of the kind of the uh the edge of the camp, uh it's it's hard to hide uh, your your heavy armor kind of clanking, and um, she kind of stumbles just a little bit um, it, with nervous energy, and uh, you see one of the two of the patrolling guards, um, kind of, or one of the patrolling guards um, definitely looks over and sees you two. Hey, stop! Uh, uh, Sabine looks ready to run. Whistle. A little bit like quietly but so, like uh, a signal that she's probably used with Oss to get their attention and she's gonna try to get him to kind of fly towards the guard to, to distract his attention okay yeah with that um, Oss is pretty pretty well trained bird uh, you give a short whistle and gesture and he um, kind of takes off and dive bombs the guard that uh, was alerted to the two of you. You can see he his uh, his words alerted the other guard that had been standing guard next to the entrance of the cave, but it's offered you guys a brief chance to run. Go, 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 go. And she'll start and, pushing Sabine to start running. Oh yeah, Sabine takes off. Um, 
and the two of you are able to run, um, just go ahead and make me just, um, I'm gonna say a constitution saving throw, just for, you guys are probably gonna be running for a while to see how long you can maintain that, uh, that run. <laughs> oh. Not very long. That's a natural one for a total of three. Yeah, no, and, uh, Sabine rolled a six, uh, so she's not able to run too long. Let me just go ahead and, for funsies, roll for the guard. Okay, now the guard is able to run a bit, little bit longer, but he has a bit of a, um, a detour because he, he makes for the other guard, uh, at the cave entrance and they're kind of both give chase. But it's far enough away that you guys are able to get a good enough head start. But you do see the two of them catching up, even after Oss has been harrying one of them. Um, what do you What do you guys uh, do as you see the guards kind of gaining on you? Um, Joran will indicate for Sabine to keep going. Um, she is going to try to keep moving as well, but she's going to kind of slow to a jog. Um, I imagine if the guards are running full steam ahead to catch up to them, that they will probably catch up at some point. Mm -hmm. um, but she's just going to be ready so that if they, once they start catching up, they're going to reach her first. Um, Oss will continue to harry them as they run, probably not trying to take actual attacks on them, um, but just doing whatever he can to, like, get in the way, um, maybe try to make it so they can't run entirely in a straight line path without colliding with a giant vulture. <laughs> Let me actually roll disadvantage then if, uh, yeah. if that's what Oss is doing and, um, yeah, so they, they do lose quite a bit of ground, um, they rolled a nine, um, kind of lose quite a bit of ground as they're both harried by Oss, this, uh, big old vulture, uh, threatening to um, beak at their face, uh, pick with talons at them. It, it's a harrowing experience, and they're mostly confused as to why there are two people running out of the mine, and this vulture is trying to, like, take their eyes out. They don't really know what's happening, and they're having a bad night. They're having a very <laughs> bad night. And one of them actually um, uh, kind of says something. It's hard to, for you, either of you to hear. But he says something to the other guard and will actually head back to camp. But the other one follows you for a while. Um, uh, let me see. I'll roll one more. Uh, Roll one more time for the the w lone guard with disadvantage um, because Oss is doing his thing and holy okay wait no that's actually worse because <laughs> um, it's disadvantage so, so for nat twenty <laughs> no he rolled an eight so um, you guys will both take a point of exhaustion I will say but you can continue to run and just l out try to outlast this guard. Um, okay, yeah, she will gladly take that if it keeps the guy from catching up to them. Yeah. Um, which, yeah, it's... You, the tiredness is starting to weigh on you from staying up past both of your bedtimes and now running pretty consistently. Um, you've covered quite a bit of ground. You've actually managed to make it almost back to where the road kind of connects. Um, to take you back to camp. But oh, you you feel the burn. You are having to kind of stop and catch your breath. Sabine, too, looks pretty winded. Um, the, the guard has kind of given up at this point. Because you guys have gone so far. He wasn't really that dedicated to chasing you guys. But it was more left like a... aggro range. <laughs> yeah, you, you left his aggro range, basically. Um, and he he does still need to guard the the cave and can't do that if he's chasing two random people through the desert. Um, and eventually, you guys are back on the road. The guards are left behind, and you are on the road back to 
back to base camp where you gather, you probably may get back by sun uh, sun up because of your uh, your run through the desert. God damn, that was a lot. Um, yeah, Joran needs a minute to kind of catch her breath because I imagine she's she's got some decent endurance just from being an athletic person, but she also just sprinted in like full scale mail through the desert. Mm-hmm. Uh- <laughs> and even though it's it's not under the direct sun, it's still it's still hot. it's still hot. It's still pretty toasty. Yeah, so I imagine she probably needs another minute or two longer than than Sabine to just kind of like catch her breath, get her bearings again. Um, she checks to make sure Oss is peeled off of the guard who's now returning back to his post and make sure he's somewhere overhead. Yeah. Um, <sighs> Oss is kind of doing like lazy circles, just gliding um, way up Above, above, uh, above you guys. I know. Lucky Bird probably had a nap while we were inside. <laughs> oh yeah, he 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 might have gotten himself some dinner. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so they're on the road again, and Jordan is just like, well, so he could have gone better. Sveen is like doubled over, hands on her knees, like the 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 school nerd who had to run track for the first time and is just like it's it's just now hitting her um oh my legs are gonna hurt in the morning are you gonna be able to <sighs> get back to camp yeah i just should be good i just whoo i'm not used to running that much oh wow just uh don't take too long, just tell me when you're ready to go. Yeah, we should we should probably get moving. Um whew, yeah, let's get moving so we can make it back. We're making really good time, I think. Oh I'll, I'll cross our fingers. Yeah, yeah. And um the two of you can start making your way back to camp. Um it's still probably another couple hours, um, to get back there. And it had, um, it's a, it's on the road, so you know that there's not typically creatures that come mm-hmm. too close, um, and people don't typically travel in this early of an hour, some do, um, but it seems most of the travel is on the southern road to go to Barren Sands, and not as much going towards the uh, Silver Watch encampment where you are. Um, But the two of you are kind of walking hurriedly. Um, You make it about probably half an hour outside of the camp before you see some figures standing in the road before you. Jordan will kind of reach out to um, grab Sabine to, to kind of pull her to the side of the road um are they just walking down the middle or are they standing around waiting? it looks like they are standing and waiting and i'll go ahead and move you to this map where i have some things set up gotcha. um so that's about how far you guys are away you know about 100 or so feet away from a group of what looks like six people um led by uh mostly orcish individual with a kind of long bow strung across his back um and a rather wicked looking hang on let me grab his weapon um a sword and shield kind of strapped to his back and it looks like they're just waiting i don't know it doesn't appear as they've noticed you just yet they're kind of talking amongst themselves yeah, she's gonna try to tug Sabine kind of to the side of the road. I think probably more towards the right where it looks like there might be some rock cover. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of crouch them down so maybe if it's 
if they haven't been spotted yet, her hope is that they might just on a quick pass by think that they're just rocks on the side um, real quick. And by the way, I am not able to move those tokens. Uh oh. Um, Do you want to just delete them and let me draw more? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so she'll she'll pull them to the side. There are people up there. Let's give me a moment. And she's she's peering up at them from this distance. Can she tell um, if they're wearing any kind of recognizable armor, icons? Do Go ahead and no. Yeah, go ahead and make a perception check. 14? Fourteen? Not too bad. You can, um, you do notice that the, um, half-orc individual in front, um, is, looks pretty well armored. You might mistake him for a bandit if you didn't see the two kind of human figures behind him dressed in what you know to be silver watch garb. Group of the watch. Oh no. That's not good. And that oh. guard when they left, they he he didn't really say anything to stop them, right? He just kinda waved them through. Yeah. So she's kind of keeping an eye on the group, but has her head kinda tilted back to Sabine and just and other than the guard we passed, who else knows you left camp? Nobody. I, I didn't tell anyone else. Nobody saw you leave. Not that I know of. Nobody saw you walk to my tent. No, I tried to be really discreet about it. I didn't... I didn't see anybody. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. Stay here for a moment going to walk closer so they start doing whatever they do to me. If they just watch, they may just be keeping an eye on the road. Once they're focused on me, I want you to follow the rocks and go around. Okay. Right, I'll, I'll so wait for your signal. She'll, um, also I imagine is still probably circling, so she's not going to call him down quite yet. She wants him to be kind of a surprise element in case there is trouble and she'll start heading back onto the road um heading just a little bit closer she's not going to fully approach them but kind of make it look like she's back to ambling down the road okay um you make your way um towards the individuals sabine in the meantime kind of takes shelter as much as she can kind of hiding behind the rocks um but as you approach the um orcish individual speaks up hey um he looks like a moment like he's trying to discern exactly who you are um and as you get closer and your your horns and tail become visible he reaches for his weapon oi that's the one uh, and he gives a gesture for the others behind him, and they start moving forward. So she saw him reach for a weapon, right? Yes, yes, he is He is drawing his bow. Um, and I'm gonna have you roll some initiative. Gotcha. Yeah, I would imagine at this point she's probably not gonna try to talk if she yeah. sees him, him drawing on her, so we will roll for Joran. That's a 7 on her initiative. Let me see for Oss. I think he just goes on my initiative. No, he rolls for initiative too. Hang on. Alrighty. Grab initiative for these guys and then I'll have those who act on that. And then there we go. There we go. Okay. Um, and there's your initiative, and then... Yeah. Are you Aus able to access Oss's sheet? 
Um, he he does not have a button to roll for initiative. I do have a sheet up, um, but it's oh, not I dropping see. on that. Uh, so, I see it. Do you yeah. see it's like right next to his armor class hit points, kind of in the middle? Oh, there we go. Yeah, there it is. Little button off to the side. All right, excellent. That's fine. That puts him after my turn, so I will take that lower roll. Okay. Um, first up is Sabine, who is going to just stay hidden, not moving. She's just kind of internally panicking. Um, but Theragar is up first, and he is going to make a longbow. He's going to try and shoot an arrow at you. He draws back a 16. Uh, 16 does not hit. Nice! Alright, yeah, you, um, the armor- or the arrow that he, uh, releases just kind of, uh, very- barely clips against the shoulder- your shoulder plate. Just kind of bouncing off harmlessly. And it is your turn. I'll have to try harder than that. She'll take her maul off her back. Let me measure some distance here. Gotcha. She can get right up in that half orc's face. Um, since he drew first, she does not feel bad about taking a swing at him with the maul. Um, I would also, with that attack, um, like to use a superiority die to make that a trip attack. So let me roll this first. Definitely. It does have to hit, so let me know if that attack hits. Uh, it does not hit. Gotcha. So that uh, that trip attack I don't think matters then, since we did not hit. And uh, that's her turn. She swings and it's a miss. It's, it's a solid 11. Alrighty. It is Oss's turn. Yeah, he is... Where is your movement, my friend? 50. Gotcha. Alright, so he cannot get quite to flanking, but we will have him come down and just take a swoop and strike at that, uh, that's a human, I believe? Mm -hmm. to yeah. To that orc's, yep, side, so he will just, also will just swoop down and try to get a beak attack on him on the way. Go for it. Ooh, unfortunately, an eight. eight will not hit him. <laughs> I figured, I figured, and that is both of their turns. Alrighty, um, yeah, unfortunately this guy isn't quite sure why there's just a vulture swooping down at him, <laughs> um, but he has his orders, and, uh, the, the orders are to attack you, and that is a solid seven to hit. That's his seven turn. Does not hit. <laughs> then this guy's gonna come forward. And, uh, let's see if- let's see what he rolls. A 14. Does not 14 hit. Also does not hit. Yeah, you are able to deflect both of those blows with ease, uh, with your- with your maul. You kind of bring the- the longer hilt of it up, uh, and their attacks just bounce off. Um, oh right, I was gonna have those random guys go. Um, they're gonna- they're gonna hang back for now, actually. And Sabine is going to- Movement dash off this way. Um, there, and there we go. Um, you see one of the as the two kind of human guards are harrying you. Um, one of them shouts, "She's not with her, Theragar." Um, and he's gonna make a quick perception check. And that is a five. <laughs> She's around here somewhere. And he's going to um, shield bash you. He's going to kind of bring the shield off of his back and bash it out at you at 23. Yeah. Definitely hits. Alrighty. Definitely hits. It is a bludgeoning and I need you to make a strength saving throw. 22. Oh yeah, no, you resist that getting knocked prone, but the the shield definitely gives you a bit of a, a shock to the system. Um, gotcha. He has, he has multi-attacks. Um, 
go for it. So he is going to... Uh, let me just double check. Nope, he's only doing it one-handed, so it's going to be this. 15? Nope. And an 11. Also no. Yeah, you, um, the shield definitely gives you a bit of a shock, but, um, you kind of shake it off pretty quickly and are able to parry the next two blows against you, and it is your turn. Gotcha. She is going to just go ahead and knock at the half-orc again, since he seems to be the one that's, uh, he was the one that made the comment about looking for Sabine, right? Yes. Yeah, so she wants as much of his attention on her as possible, so she is just going to take another swing at him. Go for it. <laughs> a nine, unfortunately. A nine. <laughs> no, will not hit. Yeah, um, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. Uh, feel free to have Austin make another attack, though. Yeah, yeah, it's close quarters. I imagine it's probably pretty hard to swing that mall around, but she is trying her best. Um, Os will... Um, he will kind of swing up a little bit so that he's a little outside of the normal uh, range there and he's going to try to come behind the uh, the half orc and just take a attack on him for a 20, 20 to hit? Uh, yeah, 20 will hit. For a whopping 4 damage. Hey, every little bit counts. <laughs> every little bit counts. Um, right. That is Asa's turn. I would think that he probably tr is trying to stay up high enough that he's not immediately in, like, sword swinging range. Right. So kind of like a swoop and uses a little movement to get back up again. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. Um, and then uh, these guys are going to go ahead and make their attacks against you. And I forgot to do this, forgot to do this last time, but they're going to do Reckless for a 15 to hit. Nope. And a 13 to hit. Also no. Damn! <laughs> Jorn just taking it like a champ! Uh, and Sabine is still just... Uh, she's off the map at this point, but she's just running. Uh, trying to get away. And it is Theragar's turn. And he is going to, once again, uh, make some attacks. He's gonna shield bash. For 16 to hit also still does not hit. So yeah, you, you see it coming this time and you, uh, you're you able to kind of mitigate the, the force of it. And then he's going to bring the sh uh, spear up and around. Um, let me see, that is it. No, 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 ah! My guy! Second, no, second one will hit. Okay, yeah, the second one, uh, 24 for nine piercing damage. Gotcha. And then he gets one- or wait, no, because that was three, so that's all his attacks. It is your turn. We are just gonna rinse and repeat here. She's gonna attack. Now, since Oss is behind him, that would count for flanking, right? Uh, yes, it would. Gotcha. She will take another swing at him. 22. Uh, now I would like to make that a trip attack. <laughs> Yeah, go for it. Okay, so you expend one superiority die to knock, knock him down. Um, he needs to make a strength saving throw. Um, the DC is... Run that math real quick. It'll be a 14 is the DC. Okay. Unfortunately, yeah, he, he does succeed with um, a 22. I, do believe he there is some extra damage, so let me go ahead and roll. That is for mm -hmm. the regular, and then my superiority die. Is that and that is a D eight as well. So it's total of fourteen damage. Fourteen, not bad at all. Very nice. All right, and then uh, right after you is Oss. Gotcha. He will likewise take a swoop down. Um, he's got pack tactics, so that's with advantage for 13. 13, unfortunately, will not hit. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, and he just... Tiny bit of movement to swoop right back up. Alright. 
then these guys are gonna come to blows. Let's see with their reckless attacks if they uh, 17 to hit. 17 meets my armor class. Yep, yeah, needs to beat it. So yep. that is five. whopping five cool. damage. And then the other one, oh, that <laughs> that will probably do it. Yeah, that's a uh, nine damage. Yeah, um, that did it. She was sitting at six after that first attack. Okay, so as this um, as this second warrior brings his axe up, um, he can kind of see that you're you've taken some hits, you've taken some blows. Um, he aims for your head. Um, but at the last minute, um, Theragar holds his, uh, actually stops him with his spear out and stays his blade. Once they're in alive. And, um, instead will, um, bring the shield up and slam it in your face. Um, knocking you solidly unconscious uh, onto the ground. And you are, you are out. But very briefly, um, you hear, just as you're kind of fading in and out of consciousness, um, some of the chatter from the individuals, you hear something, 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 dragon bitch, something, something, something. And then you hear, or you you don't hear rather you feel a splitting pain on your head as you feel a resounding crack and darkness takes you and that is the end of your introduction joran oh boy oh boy Fun stuff. Oh yeah.